In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. We are for the Mass tonight for the people of the parish and John Morrissey. And as we begin our Mass, we ask God's pardon and peace. You are sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You intercede for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast, kindled the faith of the people you have made your own. Increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed, that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Okay. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Uh, the whole group of believers uh, was united, heart and soul. Uh, no one claimed for his own use anything that he had, as everything they owned was held in common. Uh, the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord with great power, and they were all given great respect. Uh, none of their members was ever in want, as all those who owned land or houses would sell them and bring the money from them to present to the apostles. It was then distributed to any members who might be in need. At the word of the Lord. And the response, give thanks to the Lord for he is good, for his love has no end. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good, for his love has no end. Uh, let the sons of Israel say, his love has no end. Let the sons of Aaron say, his love has no end. Let those who fear the Lord say, his love has no end. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his love has no end. The Lord's right hand has triumphed, his right hand raised me up. I shall not die, I shall live, and recount his deeds. I was punished, I was punished by the Lord, but not doomed to die. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his love has no end. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the work of the Lord, a marvel in our eyes. This day was made by the Lord, we rejoice and are glad. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his love has no end. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ has been begotten by God, and whoever loves the Father that begot him loves the child whom he begets. We can be sure that we love God's children if we love God himself and do what he has commanded us. This is what loving God is, uh, keeping his commandments. And his commandments are not difficult because anyone who has, begotten, who has been begotten by God has already overcome the world. This is the victory over the world, our faith. Who can overcome the world? 
Only the man who believes that Jesus is the Son of God, Jesus Christ who came by water and blood, not with water only, but with water and blood, with the Spirit as another witness, since the Spirit is the truth. The word of the Lord. Gospel acclamation, Alleluia, Alleluia. Jesus said, you believe because you can see me. Happy are those who have not seen and yet believe. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. In the evening of the same day, the first day of the week, the doors were closed in the room where the disciples were for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them. He said to them, Peace be with you, and showed them his hands and his side. The disciples, disciples were filled with joy when they saw the Lord, and he said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so I am sending you. After saying this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. For those who sinned you forgive, they are forgiven. For those who sinned you retain, they are retained. Thomas called the twin, who was one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. When the disciples said, We have seen the Lord, he answered, Unless I see the holes that the nails made in his hands, and put my finger into the holes they made, and unless I can put my hand into his side, I refuse to believe. Eight days later, the disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. The doors were closed, but Jesus came in and stood among them. Peace be with you, he said. Then he spoke to Thomas. Put your finger here. Look, here are my hands. Give me your hand. Put it into my side. Doubt no longer, but believe. Thomas replied, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, you believe because you can see me. Happy those who have not seen and yet believe. There were many other signs that Jesus worked and the disciples saw, but they're not recorded in this book. These are recorded so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that in believing this you may have life through his name. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, merciless is the description given to terrorists of whatever ilk. We think of the Middle East and Northern Ireland and all parts of the world where there's terrorism. And that is the characteristic when they kill people, it's merciless. And it's in sharp contrast to the divine mercy of Christ our Lord. When he was challenged by Herod as to be a king, he said his kingdom was not of this world, could have beckoned the angels of God to defend him. He wasn't going down that road of violence, but he could have done. And today is Divine Mercy Sunday, originating from the revelations given to Sister Faustina by the Sacred Heart of Jesus. She was a Polish religious sister and her revelations came between the two world wars of the last century. John Paul II promoted the devotion and in 1980, he began his encyclical with the words, it is God who is rich in mercy, whom Jesus Christ has reconciled to us as Father. It is his very Son who in himself has manifested him and made him known to us as the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort. And that particular devotion is reflected not on this statue initially, but also on the Polish apparition and uh, you see the blood and water coming from the side of Christ. And in the Gospel, doubting Thomas is invited by Jesus, put your finger here, look here are my hands, give me your hand, put it into my side. So that is where the 
devotion stems from, that the grace that issues from the side of Christ is the waters of baptism and the, the blood shed for us. A church historian writes, the Middle Ages saw a, a transition from the wound in Jesus' side and a source of great grace to the heart of Jesus as an express object of a particular more personal devotion. And this statue that we have here and probably goes back to the 17th century. There was private revelations to Margaret Mary Alacuit at Paralimonial. And in between 1673 and 1675, his devotion to the Sacred Heart was promoted and it shaped the practice. And the Bishop of Poland were allowed to celebrate the feast of the Sacred Heart which was extended to the Universal Church in 1856. And when we think of the revelation in France in that century, there was an extreme form of Christianity called Jansenism. And it was merciless, it was very strict. And the revelation of the Sacred Heart wanted to remind people of the mercy of Christ. And that's why she had this apparition to focus on that. And certainly our present Pope, when, when he became Pope in 2013, the following year, he declared it as a year of mercy, the divine mercy. And the revelations stress the mercy of Christ extended to sinners and holy souls. And the revelations were given to break down despair and doubt in God's mercy, as revealed in Jesus. Recently I saw a, a, a program I'd seen back in the 70s, The World at War. It charts the war from 1939 to 45, not only in Europe, but also in Japan and the Far East. And the word that kept coming up with regard to the fighting and struggle and also the concentration camps was merciless. And that's the, the opposite of what we required when we think of Jesus. A merciless people is a godless people. And in our own time, the merciless, merciless nature of killings, the enemies is recognized obviously in the troubles in the Middle East at this time, and also Ukraine. And it's only divine mercy that can overcome the hatred that leads to the hardening of heart, which brings about a merciless killing. But it's not just in the context of warfare, it's closer to home sometimes. And sadly, we see in the news about little children being abandoned, and uh, obviously some parents just can't cope with parenthood, but it, it, it's merciless sometimes. They die. Of star One little boy died of starvation because he, he was left with his granddad. And there was other incidents recently in the papers. But sometimes people can be merciless in their revenge. You know, not just killing people, but blanking them out and showing no understanding or forgiveness. Human understanding and forgiveness sometimes says, I forgive you, but I won't forget. Whereas divine mercy forgives and forgets, because God wants to take away the guilt as well as the sin, because it's the guilt that can hold people back, and he wants us to be happy when we get his forgiveness, and he wants us to experience the peace. And it's in that gospel that we hear how our Lord gave the church the sacrament of confession so that people could have their sins and guilt taken away. And this is, I remember an old priest, Father Devani, died a couple of years ago. When he was at seminary, he used to say, when they were being taught about confession, he said, as long as they go from the confessional a happy person, then when they came in, then you've done your job. And that was the work of grace. And he said, our Lord wants to take away guilt so that people can be confident 
and confess their sins knowing that God understands us in every way that we are. And so when we think of this Sunday, we pray that there'll be more divine influence in people's hearts because human influence is insufficient. And uh, that's why we need that divine grace of God. I remember when I was a young boy, we used to serve on the altar. And at the end of Mass, there was a prayers for the conversion of Russia. It was in, in the light of the Fatima revelations and about the increase of communism and, and how that was merciless in not only killing the Tsar's family, but we know millions of Russians died. And through that particular revolution, <coughs> and uh, their own people were killed by their own Russians, turned on their own. There's nothing worse than civil war, of course, and people turn against their own. And so we pray in this Mass that the, the influence of God will grow in the world, and uh, particularly the mercy of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We stand now and we say together our creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. My brothers and sisters, with joy at Christ rising from the dead, let us turn to God our Father in prayer. He heard and answered the prayers of the Son he loves so much. Let us trust that he will hear our petitions. Uh, for the Church, uh, especially Francis, our Pope, and all the bishops, may their faithfulness to Christ and the teaching of the Apostles uh, strengthen us all in faith and love. Lord, in your mercy. Uh, for the faithful, may they through their ordinary everyday lives show good example and bring others to the mercy and love of Christ. Lord, in your mercy. For a new birth of peace on the earth among all human families and nations, and that hatred and violence and war may cease. Lord, in your mercy. Uh, for the victims of the earthquake in uh, Taiwan, may they receive all the help they need and be assured of our prayers. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Uh, for all those in our parish in any kind of need, thinking especially of the sick and the housebound, and the bereaved that they, may, that, that they might experience the healing power of the risen Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Uh, together, let us ask Mary, uh, uh, the mother of Jesus, uh, to join her prayers with ours as we say, Amen. Hail Mary, Amen. full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. God of love and mercy, 
You give strength to the weary and new courage to those who have lost heart. Hear the prayers of all who call on you in any trouble so that they may have the joy of receiving your help in their need. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, through your goodness, we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands to become our spiritual drink. Lord, wash away my iniquities, cleanse me from my sins. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain an ending happiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day, Above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death. By rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angels, host, angelic hosts, sing together the unending hymn of your glory. Say so acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirits upon them, like the Jewful, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving you thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one, by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Bernard, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. 
Help welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant a peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
back of church, there's two sheets, a white one and a yellow one. Each year the parishes should give the parishioners an opportunity to look at the finances. And there's a meeting arranged just for that purpose. And uh, it's after the 11.15 Mass on Sunday the 14th of April. And er everyone's invited to that meeting. There's a letter about the finances and then a yellow income and expenditure sheet for 22 and 23. And we have to do that, the diocese. We do it every year, not many people turn up, but we still have to do it. So if you want to come to that mass next week after the mass and attend that meeting, you're most welcome. There's also a meeting about the Tuesday, April 23rd, a fundraising open meeting in the parish hall at 6 p.m. Tuesday. But all the other notices are straightforward. So if you stand now for the final prayer and blessing. Grant, we pray, almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you all, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. <laughs>